Number 10. Chupacabra A couple in Texas claim to have captured the elusive Chupacabra. For those who don't know what the Chupacabra is, it's a mythical creature known for attacking livestock and sucking the blood from farm animals. Specifically, it loves slurping blood from cows and goats. Sightings of the creature have been reported primarily in Latin America, though they have spread recently into the southern United States. The Texas couple who allegedly caught the creature are residents of Radcliffe, and amazingly, they captured it alive. The creature has a hairless back, very large claws, and a mouth filled with teeth. According to an eyewitness, a local hunter in the region, he has never seen anything like it in 20 years. It's definitely not a raccoon or opossum, and it makes a noise unlike any local Texas animal. Brent Ortego with Texas Parks and Wildlife says it's some kind of small canine, maybe a fox, but it certainly doesn't look like one. The creature was handed over to wildlife officials who have been feeding it cat food and corn, though it still hasn't been properly identified and could realistically be anything, even a mutant. Number 9. Mutant Fish Speaking of mutants, a weird fish that has been terrifying locals in Russia was finally caught, and some claim it's a ferocious mutant. The mysterious fish was reported trying to bite people living near Lake Krugau, Siberia. The fish had rows of sharp teeth and an unusually thick tail that it could use to whack people on the feet. Some fear the mutant fish is the result of radioactive waste dumped into the lake by a nearby chemical factory. It's about four feet long and was finally hooked by a fisherman who took some photos of the creature after dumping it on land. It seems to have the head of a giant piranha yet the body of a small cod, making it look both scary and disturbing. However, experts later identified the creature as a wolf fish, not a mutant. But this doesn't make the mystery any less mysterious because wolf fish are usually found in the Arctic Sea, not in Siberian lakes. How it got there is a total mystery. Number 8. Photobombing Sea Creature A tourist was recently left baffled after a strange sea monster photobombed them. The tourist from Scotland, Harvey Robertson, was on a boat cruise with his family in Corfu, Greece, when he took a bunch of photographs inside a creepy sea cave. He was holding the camera over the edge of the boat and taking pictures of the black water. When he checked the photographs later, he realized that a strange monster was caught in one of the frames. According to Robertson himself, he had no idea what the thing was and had never seen anything like it before in all his life. So far, nobody has been able to identify the weird beast. It doesn't help that the picture is a little blurry. However, some have suggested it could be some strange sea creature from Greek mythology, like an ugly siren still living inside the cave, completely unknown to science. Number 7. Giant Rat A giant rat has been pulled out of the sewer in Mexico City. Local residents had their socks scared off their feet when the huge rat was hoisted out of the drainage system. The rat stood over six feet tall and was dumped onto the concrete along with 22 tons of trash and rubbish pulled out of the underground by city workers. Of course, it wasn't a real rodent at all, but a realistic Halloween prop. Still, the bizarre catch was enough to freak out people who saw it, with some of them first thinking there really were mutant rats living in their sewers. Later, a woman named Evelyn Lopez came forward to claim the rat as her own creation. She crafted the thing herself, but it had washed away several years ago during a big storm. How in the world such a giant rat managed to wash down into the sewers is beyond reason. How did it even fit? But hey, at least her and the big ugly rat have been reunited. Maybe she'll use it as a decoration next Halloween. Number 6. Werewolf in Montana, a rancher shot and killed something that looked like a small werewolf. Either that, or it was an unusually mutated bear, or a real-life direwolf. The animal looked very strange and puzzled animal experts all over the nation. Was it an ordinary wolf that happened to look a little weird, or a true monster? According to CBS News, the mystery of the killed werewolf was so serious that a DNA test was ordered to determine the true identity of the animal. After the hunter killed the animal, he contacted Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. They showed up to take photos of it and post them online. It had grayish fur, a very large head, and legs that were a little too short to belong to a wolf. After a month of waiting, the DNA tests finally came back and the mystery was solved. In the end, it was just an ordinary gray wolf. This is according to testing done by the US Fish and Wildlife Service at their lab in Oregon. Nobody knows why the wolf looked so unusual, like a scrappy little monster. Maybe it was just born with abnormally short legs and an unusually terrifying face filled with sharp, werewolf-like teeth. Number 5. Deadly Sawfish 
A horrifying sea monster has been caught near the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It was one of the rarest catches that a fisherman can make in the state, about as rare as sighting the legendary skunk ape. After a brutal 20 minutes of playing tug-of-war with the unknown creature, Kevin Thoreau finally gained enough ground to yank it out of the water. That was when he saw what it was, a sawfish. Sawfish catches are very rare. The animal itself is something of an underwater enigma. It has a long, heavy body that it uses to lay on the bottom of the sea where it hunts. The fish also has a pair of dorsal fins and a powerful tail that make it quite the fisherman's adversary. Of course, the most prominent feature of the sawfish is its huge saw, what marine biologists call a rostrum. It sticks out of the fish's face like a hedge trimmer, about five feet long. The enormous fish uses its saw to stun small fish. It swings the saw back and forth until it hits something. Then it collects whatever it managed to stun from the bottom of the sea. Number 4. Colossal Squid A fishing crew recently captured a colossal squid that weighed about half a ton and may just be the biggest of its kind ever captured by human beings. It weighs an estimated 990 pounds and is 39 feet long from the tip of its tentacle to the top of its head. It took the fishermen about two hours to catch it in Antarctic waters, according to the fisheries minister Jim Anderton in New Zealand. The fishermen weren't actually looking for a squid. Instead, they were trying to catch Patagonian toothfish south of New Zealand. The squid accidentally got hooked and was reeled all the way to the surface, but by the time it breached the water, it was pretty much already dead. The crew then had to work to get the specimen on board without damaging it. Not only is this the biggest colossal squid ever caught, it's also the first adult male specimen to have ever been successfully captured while still alive. But what's the difference between the giant squid and the colossal squid? The giant squid is actually bigger. Think of the colossal squid like its smaller, less frightening cousin. They can only grow to be about 46 feet, whereas the giant squid can grow to be over 60 feet. These beasts of the deep descend to around 6,500 feet beneath the surface and are notorious for being vicious hunters. The creature captured had eyes about the size of dinner plates and was transported to New Zealand's National Museum for scientific study. Number 3. Humanoid Creature Reports have been coming in that a tourist managed to get some video footage of an unknown humanoid creature captured in a cage inside an abandoned Romanian zoo. Before we go any further, keep in mind that other than the obscure video footage posted online by the young tourist, there has been no confirmation of the creature's existence by any mainstream media or professional scientists. But here's what the tourist says happened. He was visiting Ornest City in Romania and decided to check out an abandoned zoo that closed down in 2007 for unknown reasons. After asking around a bit with the locals, the tourist heard rumors that the zoo was actually once used for genetic experiments. After the tourist, who refused to give his name, snuck into the abandoned zoo, he recorded a strange being trapped inside of a cage. It screamed and flailed and made horrible noises, and the tourist ran off scared for his life. He didn't dare go back or even discuss what he'd seen until he was far away from the city. To this day, we have no answer or explanation for what he witnessed. If it was a genetically modified creature or the result of some failed human experiment. Number 2. Giant-Eyed Fish Russian fishing enthusiast Roman Fedortsov spends most of his days on fishing trawlers. At 39 years old, he's been working on trawlers for just about half his life on this planet. Recently, he began uploading some photographs he's collected of the bizarre animals that he reeled up from the deepest depths of the ocean. Most of these creatures come from the Norwegian or Barents Sea, some even from the Atlantic Ocean. According to Roman himself, some of the most bizarre fish he's caught include frilled shark, big sunfish, stoplight loose jaw, and even rabbit fish. But not all his catches are recognizable. For example, there was one fish he reeled in that had an eyeball growing out of its back. Nobody knows what the weird creature was. Just another unidentified freaky fish from the darkest deeps of the ocean. Maybe even a mutant, three-eyed fish. Number 1. Eyeless Monster Speaking of eyes, a mysterious creature with no eyes washed up on a beach in South Carolina and nobody could identify it. The terrifying monster had huge teeth, a weirdly shaped body, and it left Erica Constantine, the poor woman who found the thing while walking a dog, a little shaken. Erica has lived in the region for at least five years and has never seen anything like this. It looked like it was some kind of bone monster with almost none of its skin left. 
Even worse is that nobody could agree on its origin. The cops said it was a possum, some said it was a seal, and others claimed it to be a blood-sucking tubercabra. Erica even sent pictures of the creature to her friend at the College of Charleston to try and get answers, but it did no good. This scary creature is still unidentified. Number 9. Giant Barrel Jellyfish Jellyfish can be found all throughout the ocean, and not unlike many other species, they come in all shapes and sizes. In 2019, two divers were shocked and amazed when they came face to face with a giant jellyfish known as the Giant Barrel Jellyfish. There are some jellies that have incredibly long tentacles, like the lion's mane jellyfish, which has tentacles over 30 meters long. But the giant barrel jellyfish is known for its massive bell, and it is well over the size of a human, as Dan Abbott and Lizzie Daly would discover. The cream-colored jellyfish was spotted off the coast of Cornwall, England. It's known to get large, but I haven't seen one this big, Daly told CBS News. Dan said he hasn't seen one this big either. Their appearance is quite distinctive. They're the largest jellyfish you can get here in the UK waters, Daly said. They're not a threat to humans. They have a mild sting, but wouldn't cause damage to humans, which they would then prove by swimming alongside the jellyfish for well over an hour, and it didn't seem to mind their company at all. It was a beautiful and peaceful encounter that they're not likely to ever forget. Number 8. The Lionesses and the Kidnapped Girl there have been many times when humans and animals have saved each other from harm in one form or another, but sometimes it goes beyond the rational logic of it all and it delves into the realms of whether these creatures know more than we think they do. Such as the case of three lions who actually saved a girl from being kidnapped. This happened in Ethiopia, where a little 12-year-old girl was taken by four men with their goal to try and get her to marry one of them. Yuck! They held her captive for over a week and then the police finally got a location on them. But by the time they had reached that location, they were already gone. The kidnappers took the girl and ran, which would usually end badly for the girl, except that the group ran into a trio of lions. The lions scared the men away. The kidnappers ran for their lives and left the girl. Given what we know of lions, you'd expect them to eat the girl next as she's easy prey, right? Wrong. Reports say the girl was crying when the lions saw her, Maybe the lions thought she was a young cub. We will never know for sure, but anywho, they protected her in case the kidnappers came back. This is the kind of story you just can't make up. The police eventually got to where the girl was, and they were amazed by what they saw. She was unharmed, and the lions even let her go to the police officers. As noted, humans and lions don't have the best history with one another, but in this case, they were not only able to see that this girl was in danger, but that she needed to be protected until her pride came along and saved her. Truly just an amazing encounter. Number 7. The Dolphin and Dick Van Dyke Dick Van Dyke is one of the most famous actors in history, with credits like The Dick Van Dyke Show, Diagnosis Murder, Mary Poppins, and more. He was even a guest on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, and the host asked Van Dyke if he had ever surfed near his California home. Dyke noted that he did do this once upon a time, but told a story as to why he wouldn't do it anymore. According to him, he almost died while surfing one day. He was in the ocean, not a care in the world. He was chilling so hard he fell asleep. When he awoke, he wasn't on his board anymore and he was in open water. Usually, this would be a death sentence as open water is extremely dangerous, but not for Dick Van Dyke. You see, something was keeping him afloat and as he felt around, he could feel fins. At first, he feared it was sharks, but in fact, it was a pod of dolphins. They not only kept him afloat, but they carried him back to shore and to safety. While it's true that actors do like to embellish stories, Van Dyke claimed his story was 100% true. Dolphins are known to be quite friendly with humans and even save their lives on multiple occasions. Did that happen here with Dick Van Dyke? Only the man himself knows for sure. Number 6. Bear vs. Lion Robert Biggs was enjoying a day of hiking through the woods of California when off in the distance he noticed some bears, a mother and her cub. More often than not, this is going to end bad for the human because mother bears are very aggressive when it comes to protecting their young. Robert knew this and stayed still, just watching them, which was a wise decision based on what he knew at the time. The problem was that he too was being watched by a mountain lion. The wildcat attacked him from behind. He grabbed me from behind and knocked me to the ground, Biggs told the Huffington Post. 
I was on my knees. I had my rock pick out because I was on a steep incline and I smashed the cat in the head with it. He screamed, but he didn't let go. Then something amazing happened. The mother bear saw or heard what was happening and rushed in to save Biggs. She fought the mountain lion off. It was no match for mama bear. After a victory, the bear left Biggs alone and he was able to head home with only a few scrapes. But according to Biggs, the bear was doing more than just defending its own. I'm 100% sure it did want to save my life, he said. We made eye contact. I'd seen the bears before and I knew she knew who I was. What an amazing story. Why do you think the bear came to Robert Biggs' rescue? What would you have done in the situation? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Whale Breach Reader's Digest has always been one to look into the honest and heartwarming stories of people, to see what kind of incredible experiences they've had in their lives. And for one woman named Amy Motherwell, she had an encounter with a whale that was apparently quite breathtaking. My most memorable wildlife encounter was holidaying in Albany, Western Australia. We were out in the bay in a small tinny when a whale and her calf began to get close to our boat. We moved away and just a moment later the whale breached completely out of the water in the wake of our boat. It was one of the best things I have ever had the privilege to see. Not surprisingly, this is one of the appeals of going on the water near whales because they are often willing to put on a show in one form or another and just being that close to them is something special as well. Hopefully she didn't get too soaked when the whale did breach, but we don't think that she would have cared. Number 4. The Microbat Another tale from Reader's Digest in regards to an amazing animal encounter comes from Rosie Rose, who noted that while she was on her way to a car one time, she saw something odd on the ground. At first, she thought it was a moth because of its size. However, as she went down to pick it up, she found herself looking at a microbat. And while some might have been put off by that, Rosie wasn't. In fact, she tried to do her best for her new guest. I then spent the whole night researching about bats and food and whatever else I could. Seeing as I live in the middle of nowhere, there aren't a lot of people about that can help. But I had spoken to wildlife groups and had formula ordered and was already madly in love with my guest. She was very careful in how she fed and washed him and she was able to watch him grow and even trained him to react to different calls she made for him. Although the bat died not too long after, his presence helped her and her neighbors understand the wonder and truth about bats as a whole, such as how they keep the insect population down and occasionally protect Gotham City. For such a tiny bit of my life, he left a big mark on my heart. Aww. Number 3. Mr. Souza and the Penguin Joao de Souza was a 71-year-old man living in Rio de Janeiro. He had lost his wife and in an effort to cope with the loneliness, he would go walking along the beach. But one day in 2011, as he was doing his walk by the beach, he came across a little South American Magellanic penguin that appeared to be struggling. The poor penguin was covered in oil, which was killing it. Joao saved the penguin from the waters and took it home. He slowly and carefully cleaned the penguin so that it could be better, which is indeed the proper way of handling the situation when it comes to animals covered in oil. Once back to full strength, Joao took the penguin back to the ocean so that it could go back to wherever it came from but the penguin didn't seem like he wanted to leave Joao. So he named the penguin Din Dim, and much to Joao's delight, every day Din Dim kept coming back to visit. Since they met, the penguin, which normally breeds on the Patagonia coasts of Argentina and Chile, thousands of miles away, has become a faithful companion, swimming every year from its habitat to spend up to eight months living with a lonely retired fisherman in his house on the island, showing a connection that goes beyond mere gratitude. I love the penguin like it's my own child and I believe the penguin loves me," said Mr. Souza in an interview with Globo TV, in which the bird honks with delight as he recognizes his human friend. No one else is allowed to touch him, he pecks them if they do. He lays on my lap, lets me give him showers, allows me to feed him sardines and to pick him up. Now this is a story that is worthy of Disney, and it shows that animals are more than happy to show their gratitude to those that have helped them from terrible situations. Number 2. Mila the Beluga Whale Most whale species are known for being both kind and playful with humans, and for one whale named Mila, she was able to sense danger and saved a human's life. In China, there was a banal apnea competition going on, which is basically a type of free diving that leads to people getting really deep in the water, and then they hold their breath for as long as possible. 
Yang Yun was one such competitor and she was doing it in a beluga whale pond. As she was doing her run, she realized that something was very wrong with her leg. It was cramped in the freezing water. Unable to swim, she was basically doomed to die. Remember, she was holding her breath. To the shock of all, a beluga whale swam around and saw she was in trouble. Mila, as she would be named, realized Yoon was struggling and actually clamped onto her leg without causing severe pain and then brought her up back to the surface. I felt this incredible force under me driving me to the surface, Yoon said. An organizer of the event credited Mila with saving Yoon's life. She's a sensitive animal who works closely with humans and I think this girl owes her her life. Whales are incredibly intelligent creatures that are to be respected and honored. Number 1. The Dingo In Australia, there are all kinds of wildlife, and a lot of animals in the outback are deadly and no doubt want to kill you. So it's not surprising that some people have incredible animal encounters, but not all of them are amazing in a good way. Some of them are amazing in a scary way, such as what happened with Carla Walker. She was down under on Fraser Island, and after going for a walk, she found herself looking at a dingo. Dingoes are a type of dog that are infamous for their interactions with humans, and in this case, it didn't want to let Carla go away. I was intrigued, but kept on walking. But the dingo kept on walking too. I tried telling it to get lost, no reaction from the dingo. I then decided to try and move around the dingo. It kept moving with me, almost mirroring what I was doing. I then tried going into the water, thinking surely the dingo wouldn't want to come in. I walked until the water was over my ankles and the dingo walked right on in too. It didn't want me going anywhere. Dingoes may look like cute dogs, but they are the largest land predator in Australia and are considered top of the food chain apex predators. For the most part, dingoes are carnivores, but they also eat fruit, grains, and nuts at times. They eat small to medium game, whatever's on the menu. Was Carla on the menu? She was starting to worry about what would happen when suddenly a car drove up and honked its horn. This distracted the dingo enough and Carla took the opportunity to run and jump into the car so that she could be rushed away. And that's probably as close as she ever wants to get to a dingo ever again. But was the dingo trying to hurt her? Or maybe he just wanted to be a pet? What do you think? 12. Doberman as one of the most intimidating looking dogs out there, it comes as no surprise that the Doberman has a prolific military history. These tough pups are known to be smart and fiercely loyal and they have incredible guarding capabilities. Since they are just so dang smart, these dogs are very easy to train, making them perfect for military services. Their use in combat can be traced as far back as World War I as well as World War II. The Doberman had many jobs, including locating mines from the enemy, rescuing wounded soldiers on the battlefield, being guard dogs at camp, and delivering messages to different bases. Sadly, some were even used as suicide dogs. Similar to suicide bombers, the pups would be fitted with explosives and sent towards the enemy where they'd be detonated remotely. This is just one of the harsh realities of war. They served diligently, with one dog even receiving a letter of commendation from a US Lieutenant General the Doberman's name was Rex, and he successfully warned troops in World War II of Japanese soldiers nearing their camp. The letter reads as follows. Rex's action was undoubtedly instrumental in saving the lives of many Marines. Rex and Dobermans like him will be remembered as treasured canine soldiers. Number 11. Rottweiler Rottweilers are one of the oldest dog breeds on historical record, being traced back all the way to the Roman Empire. The origins of their name come from a small German town back in 73 AD. They were commonly used as guard dogs back then, and unsurprisingly, still are today. These pups are known for their willingness to work, paired with their incredible strength. Centuries ago, the Rottweiler was used to guard the money pouches of butchers, but their job responsibilities soon increased. Years went by and the dogs were used for anything, from pulling carts to herding livestock, but when the Industrial Revolution hit and railroads started popping up, the demand for them dwindled. As countries started warring with one another and it seemed the whole world was against each other, their popularity saw a resurgence. In World War I, Rottweilers were used as police dogs for their reliability and ableness to obey commands. Later on, they got more jobs as messengers, rescue dogs, and in helping with drafts. These dogs have truly been good boys for millennia. Number 10. German Shepherd Probably one of the most common and well-known dogs in the service, the German Shepherd is a diligent breed.
They were first used in the military by the Germans back in the early 1900s by Captain Max von Stefanitz. The captain created the breed by selectively breeding his most intelligent dogs. After many years, he had the perfect pup for the German police force. The shepherds showed great skill in tracking and were extremely obedient. Stefanitz thought his dogs could do more and he was just in time to test their abilities out during World War I. German shepherds served as messengers in the field and alongside soldiers as ammunition carriers. They were even able to lead the wounded and those blinded by wounds to medical help. It was this work that led to the first seeing eye dogs. Impressed by the skillful dogs' acts of heroics, the Americans and English began to create their own arsenal of pups. In World War II, the US used German shepherds as messengers, which led to canine training camps to pop up around the country. The training can last anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks for the dogs, and once they complete it, they are tested on a special training course. There are four main positions these dogs can have – scouting, patrolling, detecting bombs, or messenger. Upon completion of the course, they are sent alongside their handlers into war dog platoons. A special bond is formed between these dogs and the soldiers, to the point that they become more than just animals, but are comrades to those in military service. German Shepherds have proved themselves to be man's best friend, no matter the front. 9. Belgian Malinois Another entry from the Shepherd family, the Belgian Malinois was bred for high energy and learning ability. These innate skills help them succeed in the toughest conditions, whether it be for detection, security, or protection. If you can believe it, some overachieving dogs even know how to skydive. On top of all of this, the Belgian Malinois has an amazing sense of smell, allowing them to rescue anyone in need. Their kind disposition makes them perfect for search and rescue work, and these clever puppies are even able to sniff out dangerous explosives. They're employed all over the world in Canada, the US, and even here down under in Australia. These pups are one of the best breeds in the world for use in military and security. Do you think your dog could be trained to skydive? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 8. Yorkshire Terrier – Smokey This next listing will probably surprise a lot of you if you know anything about the breed. Yorkshire Terriers are very small dogs, so you might wonder how they could be of use to the military. Well, in World War II, one tiny terrier named Smokey did the unthinkable and served as a critical asset to American troops in the Philippines. At the Allied airfield located on the Lingayen Gulf of Luzon, Japanese plane attacks were doing a number on US communication lines. They were in desperate need of help to run new telephone lines through a small pipe that went 70 feet or 21 meters under the soldiers' feet. But the US soldiers had none of the right equipment, so the job would have left them completely vulnerable to attack and taken them days to complete. They did have one choice though, Smokey. The pup belonged to one of the men named Corporal Bill Wine who adopted her in New Guinea. They tied a kite string onto Smokey's collar and sent her on through the pipe. Utilizing the string, the men were able to thread phone wires through the piping. That day, little Smokey saved over 250 men with her work. She would go on to continue service as a therapy dog for wounded veterans for many years. Smokey is a true inspiration to us all. 7. Huskies Huskies have long been used as working dogs. Most people know them as being sled dogs in northern parts of the world. One example of sled dogs in the military dates back to 1898, when Major General Joseph Kastner was tasked with exploring the interior side of Alaska. He used dog teams made up of huskies to explore and map out the vast region. During the Alaskan Gold Rush in the 1890s, another army officer, Lieutenant William Mitchell, was sent to connect the icy Alaskan mountains to the telegraph system. To accomplish this, he received help from locals on how to properly mush dogs, then put his newly learned skills to the test. Huskies went with him, carrying loads of equipment large distances across the terrain. Thanks to them, Mitchell was able to finish his job a full three years earlier than his expected timeline. In World War II, the dogs served as search and rescue operatives since they were able to traverse through rough tundra terrain. Their loyalty and proven ability is why Huskies are still used for service today. 6. Giant Schnauzer Loyal and courageous, the Giant Schnauzer stands 70 centimeters tall and weighs about 43 kilos. They are fiercely hard workers and are employed as police, military, guide and rescue dogs all around the world. One such Schnauzer named Brock worked as a part of former President Donald Trump's Secret Service detail. 
He was trained in the 341st Training Squadron at San Antonio Lackland, Texas. Although you wouldn't be able to tell now, Brock went down in history at the base as one of the hardest dogs to train. When first paired with his handler, Sergeant Dominic Young, Brock wouldn't follow commands and was very headstrong. Eventually, the pair formed a strong bond through hard work and became one of the best handler teams out there. Brock, like many of his Schnauzer brothers, knows what it means to work hard, which makes the giant Schnauzer an asset as a military dog breed. 5. Boxer Everyone wanted the perfect hunting dog back in the 1800s, one that was super strong and able to keep up with its human partner. So, breeders began the task of breeding the now extinct Bull and Beesa with the English Bulldog, leading to the lovable boxer we have today. Their features were made for the art of hunting, with a wide jaw for latching onto prey, facial wrinkles to guard its eyes from blood splatter, and large nostrils for breathing while its mouth held animals. Back then, flat-faced dogs were thought to be very useful, but medical knowledge today shows us they usually have breathing difficulties. I mean, do you know anyone with a bulldog that doesn't snore? All of these traits helped the boxer serve as messenger dogs during World War I. They also helped carry supplies and packs to soldiers in need. After the nightmare of the Second World War, boxers were a popular choice in comfort and family dogs for returning veterans due to their strong disposition but family-friendly attitude. 4. Airedale Terrier these dogs are often described as war heroes from World War I. Airedale Terriers are highly intelligent canines and were capable of performing the most difficult jobs in the toughest conditions. Their bravery and perseverance enable them to see whatever job they were given through to its end. Oddly enough, some Airedales were trained to use gas masks for their safety while delivering packages to troops on the front lines. Using this transport method, the dogs would often bring medical supplies sent by the Red Cross to wounded soldiers. They saved many lives doing their job in such scary circumstances. The BBC News covered one story of a brave Airedale named Jack who persevered through a war-torn battlefield to ask for reinforcements for his battalion. Lieutenant Colonel Alastair Petrie recounts the dog's heroics. A piece of shrapnel smashed his jaw, but he carried on, and another shell tore open his coat right down his back, and he kept on going. Finally, his forepaw was shattered, but he dragged his body for the last three kilometers there was the glaze of death in his eyes when he reached headquarters, but he's done his work. He'd saved his battalion. Jack is a true British hero and should forever be remembered as one. His dedication to his comrades went above and beyond the average soldiers. This truly shines a light on the loyalty and dedication Airedale Terriers have. 3. Labrador Retriever Labs are known for their friendliness and are one of the most popular dog breeds in the world, but they also know how to work. During the Vietnam era, Labradors were used as trackers since they can tolerate heat and genuinely enjoy sniffing the ground. Whenever they found the target they were searching for, they would signal their comrades with a wag of the tail, ear twitch, tilting their heads, or stopping dead in their tracks. After reaching the age of two years old, the dogs would be sent into an eight-month-long training course. Once finished, they could serve up to six years in military action. In their training, they were never taught how to attack an enemy. They only knew how to fiercely defend their handlers in any circumstance. Oftentimes, their tracking ability would lead to finding wounded soldiers and even enemies if necessary. It's terribly sad to hear, but six labs were killed in action. And after the Vietnam War ended, the dogs were not allowed back into the US for fear that they may carry disease. Most of the labs were either euthanized or simply left in the country. It's truly heartbreaking that these good boys and girls perform their duty, some until their very last breath. 2. Belgian Sheepdog, Gronendale Although other dogs on this list served as message carriers, the first ever messenger dog during World War I was Taki, a Belgian Sheepdog. And no, not Taki like the chips. French military had begun using the Sheepdogs, also known as Gronendales, in 1914. In many battlefields, there were no transmission wires set for communication, so they had to rely on another method of correspondence. Dogs like Taki. As the youngest trained dog they had, Taki was the test runner for message carrying. She was given a message written in code inside of a waterproof capsule. Thankfully, she made it through, setting the standard of service for other Belgian sheepdogs. Thanks to the hard work of Taki, other canines of her breed are now able to serve in police work as well as the military. Another noteworthy Belgian sheepdog was named Cairo, who worked with Navy SEAL Team 6 during the attack on Osama bin Laden. Number 1. Bouvier de Flanders 
Popularly used as herding dogs, the Bouvier is a large and strong breed. They have a thick double coat that's water resistant and typically have a long beard-like tuft of hair around their mouth. In fact, another name for the dogs, Vouillard, literally translates to dirty beard. They were originally bred for herding cattle in the countryside of Flanders, Belgium. Their name actually means cow dog or cattle driver and they were the ultimate all-rounder farm dog. Some of their farm duties consisted of guarding livestock, pulling carts, transporting goods, and some were even adept at churning butter. I hope they got a salary. But as hostilities grew and Belgium entered World War I, their responsibilities would shift in a whole new direction as Flanders would soon turn into a battleground. They served as message carriers and ambulance pullers. Sadly, many of the dogs would lose their life in the line of service and the breed was on the brink of extinction. Thankfully, they would see a resurgence due to the hard work of some of the fans of the breed. Because of this, they were once again able to serve in World War II. Nowadays, Bouviers serve as police and service dogs thanks to their energetic, intelligent nature. Just like all of the other dogs on this list, the Bouvier is fit for the line of duty. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these heroic dogs? Any favorites? Let us know in the comments down below and click that thumbs up and subscribe button to see more fun videos like this. See you next time. Bye!